G'day guys! Since I'm such a tech person, I got a new laptop today and well it's actually it's been in my home for a little bit. I actually haven't opened it, uh, been busy, but now that I've got to this opportunity I thought I'd share, you know, what I got. So I've had a history with uh, MacBook Pros, so I've got this like really big beast here, right? This MacBook Pro, right? This is a very old one from like the 2000s, right? And it's super huge, right? Now you might notice over there that it's broken. Uh, basically, at university, I dropped this down a number of flights of stairs, uh, and yeah, that broke, but it still works. Like, this thing is damn sturdy. It's like a bloody tank. It's like freaking built like one too. Like, look how big it is, right? It's heavy, it's big, it's sturdy, it's lasted me for so many years and, you know, uh, I've had a long history with this one. I guess this is what made me a programmer. Anyways, that's that, right? And this thing is like, oh my god, so huge. And then we have my current MacBook Pro. My current MacBook Pro is just the one with the touch bar. You might notice here that I've got this like Velcro thing. This is a heavy duty one. I put it on the case because I didn't want to put heavy duty Velcro onto my MacBook Pro. And this is what I use to actually, you know, put on my hard drives and things like that, right? So it just makes it easy just to port around and, you know, have a hard drive sturdy on it. And you know, it's pretty basic. It has the usual uh, touch bar. Now, I think this is a thing that really like, not make me really like programming on it as much because I didn't have the physical function keys anymore. That's like the real yikes for me as a programmer. I use function keys so much and the physical feel of function keys means so much to me when it comes to programming and being efficient. So I usually stick to my, you know, um, wireless keyboard or wired keyboard for those kind of functions but yeah I don't really like using this keyboard just because of that I love the keys but the lack of function keys really hurts and now to reveal I've got a new laptop now it's still in the box because I still haven't opened it uh, don't want to dox myself so yeah it's new still in the case and Gonna open it up. So give me a moment, open it up. Oh, I guess. Open up the right way. You can see, oh my god, it's so small compared to my other laptops. Like, golly, that's small. So let's just take this part off. Alrighty. So, to just show you, this is what it looks like. Oops. Logo is like this. Alright, so nice and small compared to my other laptops. Really small. I quite like this. Now, the thing that you'll notice with my MacBook Pro is that it has a different type of keyboard. We've actually got a Japanese keyboard here. So I chose this because, you know, I'm going to Japan and I'm going to be working with Japanese keyboards anyways and I should get used to the idea of using a Japanese keyboard which has, you know, keys in different places and you've got to get used to like things being changed like the at symbol is no longer a shift 2 over there, it's over here and your apostrophe is a shift 7. Um, and yeah, you've got your colon here. So there's a little bit of difference here. Uh, some people will think that it's a better programming uh, layout, but you know, I guess it depends on your choice. But yeah, here we go. Let's go into it. I would like to go into like the Japanese mode, but because you know, it's not like I know Japanese that well. So for now, I'm just gonna pick, hmm, do I want to go Japanese? 
Do I go Japanese? Yeah. Let's get used to the Mac OS first before we jump into Ma uh, Nihongo. To use Australian English as the main language, yep, press the I return use key. Give me the Aussie. What I found already is that the keyboard is quite different to what I'm used to. It feels like, uh, you know, the buttons are in a different place. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this. Uh, the function keys being back is such a thing that really got me into getting this MacBook Pro because basically I would rather use my, you know, wide keyboard instead of the typical, you know, built-in MacBook Pro keyboard. You know, as a programmer, the first thing you usually do is like install iTerm and Visual Studio Code. But today, I've already done that before, right? So today, let's try something different. Let's try something new. I'm gonna try and download and install Genshin. So yes, I do play Genshin Impact. I also still use the original iPad Pro. And I never seem to need to upgrade because I use it for very basic things. And yeah. It's enough. One hour later. Well, after all that, I guess I failed to install, well, get Genshin to log in. So I guess that's pretty much it really. Uh, until next time, see you then. Several days later. Yo, it's me from the future. So I did try to install Genshin again and I was able to install it and log in and play. However, I could only use the mouse left and right buttons, which doesn't really help when I want to use WASD and whatnot, right? And I guess the issue is probably because I've got a Japanese uh, keyboard versus American keyboard. And I thought, why not share the difference between a Japanese and American keyboard? So yeah, that's what I'll do right now. Alrighty, so this is my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and this is its Japanese keyboard. So what you'll notice is that uh, you'll have these hiragana keys or hiragana symbols on the QWERTY keys, right? And basically I don't use these. This is for like an alternative way of typing Japanese called I think kana, but I don't ever use that. I use romanji which is using the Roman alphabet in order to type your Japanese characters. So what you'll find is uh, the spacebar is actually much smaller now uh, and it has these two keys on either side of it and these keys are just used for changing between the English and the Japanese language and that's what they're used for. And what you'll notice other than that is that the whole layout, while it looks QWERTY, it's also got a bit of a uh, difference. So you'll see here that the enter key is now one big blob and the key on American keyboards, uh, which has a pipe and backslash key, is no longer here. What's happened is it's moved here, right? So you've got the pipe key here, but you won't find the backslash key anywhere on this keyboard. So what you have to do is you have to press this option key, right? So you hold option and you hold this yen and pipe key in order to get your backslash. So other than that, you'll notice that the numbers uh, in a different place. That's because the back tick and the tilt key is now gone. Instead, it's starting from one, right? So all the numbers that you're used to have been shifted one. So where four is used to be where three is, right? And you'll find that uh, your tilt key is here and your back tick key is right over here. And you'll notice, hey, there's the add symbol. That's usually on shift two, right? Well, that's different here. So here you'll find that two now has the double quotes and seven has the single quotes and eight and nine have the uh, curve brackets, which are usually on nine and zero. Uh, you'll find that your plus and equals are not where they usually are. It's here as a carrot and a tilde and your equal sign is over here. Where has it gone? It's gone down here. So your plus signs here your asterisk sign is here, and your semicolon and colon keys are here, and your square and uh, curly brackets are here, right? And your underscore key is right down here. So those are the major differences for the symbols, right? And then you have this one, all right? So this looks different, doesn't it? Here you've got the caps lock key. That's usually where your control key is, which has switched places. So caps lock is where control used to be 
And yeah, this is a little different for me because uh, I'm so used to control, option, command and being in a line. But yeah, that's the difference. So yeah, what do you think? Do you think you can get used to this? Do you prefer the American or the Japanese keyboard? I don't know. Uh, for me, I can use either one. I can interchange on the fly, so it's not really much an issue for me. I think the major thing that I miss the most is just the uh, double quote and the single quotes being on the numbers, so they're a little more awkward to uh, use, but yeah, no issues for me. Alrighty, uh, I thought also share uh, what a Japanese person uses for typing Japanese on their phone. So usually some people use the you know English keyboard in order to type their Japanese on their phone just like they would on a computer. However, for me I like using the 12 key or 12 kana layout. So this is what it looks like. You got your a ka sa ta na ha ma ya ra wa. And basically uh, in order to get these kind of letters you have to either click on them right so that will give you the a uh, but if you want like e then you would go to the left right and e eh, to the right u to the top and then down will give you o just like that so yeah that's how uh, you type japanese it's much more efficient because you're just swiping and tapping in order to type out your japanese versus you know typing every letter or you know just typing romaji just to uh, get those Japanese uh, characters in but that's how you type it so yeah that's all I had to share today I hope it was uh, interesting and yeah we'll see you next time catch you then bye bye